With appropriate color and hoopla, the NFL's 57th season opened with sunny skies and bright hopes in 13 locations around the nation. One of them was Robert F. Kennedy Stadium in Washington, D.C., where the hometown Redskins met the challenge of the much improved and newly confident New York Giants. The Giants have named their season the Year of the Giant Step. For everyone from front office executive to equipment manager truly believes the 1976 team is the best in many years and will be competitive with Washington, Dallas, and St. Louis in the NFC's toughest locale, the Eastern Division. Coach Bill Arnsparger, who is in the third year of a three-year contract, has admitted the rebuilding is over for his team and the time to start winning is now. Part of the basis for New York's optimism is the addition of 14 new players, some of them extremely familiar, some not so familiar. The main man, of course, is Larry Zonka, the million-dollar fullback signed from the World Football League. His presence on the team raises two questions. Does he still possess the brute strength and powerful running skills of his three Super Bowl heyday? And if so, do the Giants have enough two-fisted toughness on the offensive line to take advantage of him? This was the prime focus of the preseason, and the results were good. While winning 4 of 6, New York established an effective forward wall consisting of one veteran, Doug Van Horn, and four youngsters, John Hicks, Tom Mullen, Carl Chandler, and Al Simpson. They are so green, they have a total of only seven years' experience among them. The Redskins, too, have made some big changes with the addition of some highly priced superstars like Miami's safety Jake Scott and a new running back tandem of Calvin Hill and John Riggins. But aside from unending cash reserves, Washington's main ingredient for victory is their coach, irrepressible George Allen. In 10 seasons as a head coach, Allen has never lost an opening game. This fact, coupled with the Giants' dismal past history in games with the Redskins, loomed large as the Washington Redskins met the New York Giants in the NFL Game of the Week. Bill Arnsparger, the mastermind of Miami's no-name defense, is very pleased with his young defense. It's led by number 10 strong side linebacker Brad Van Pelt. Right from the start, he and the Giants control the line of scrimmage from Washington's Over the Hill Gang. Allen is determined to run the ball at least 40 times per game, for he feels the running game will decide the outcome, plus allow the defense to rest. To do it, he purchased Riggins and Hill to team with Mike Thomas, a devastating troika of setbacks. But in the first quarter, they were eaten up alive by the Giants' swarming defense. Washington's running attack went nowhere, so midway into the first period, Kilmer went to the air. A deflected pass became an interception by cornerback Bobby Brooks, and New York had a break and the ball in Washington territory for the first time. At this point, it looked like a long day for Billy Kilmer and the Redskin offense. The Giants didn't capitalize on the opportunity, but their punt put Washington on its own 20 for their next offensive series. John Riggins was hit behind the line of scrimmage by John Mendenhall, who jarred the ball loose. It was picked up by number 71, Dave Gallagher, who gleefully downed it at the eight. The Giant defense had again provided their offensive counterparts with good field position. This time, a golden opportunity in the shadow of the Washington goal line. With it first and goal from the eighth, this was the perfect chance for Larry Zonka and the running game to reap its first dividend. But it was not to be. Craig Morton stayed on the ground for three straight cracks that provided merely five yards, far short of the end zone. And New York had to turn to kicker Joe Donello for a field goal and a three-point lead. New York's slim lead didn't last long. On their next offensive series, Craig Morton underthrew Walker Gillette, and Ken Houston accepted the gift and returned it to the Giant 19. With the quarter almost over, this was Washington's first foray into Giant territory, and fittingly, on a day where defense dominated, their all-pro strong safety, Ken Houston, had provided the spark. 
With the acquisition of Jake Scott at the free safety position, the Redskins possibly have the finest set of safeties in the entire NFL. Kilmer wasted no time exploiting the break. Off a of play fake, he found Riggins behind Van Pelt, and Washington was 13 yards deeper into giant territory. But three plays later, they were still there when on third down, New York's Jim Stanky made a great save on a pass intended for Frank Grant in the end zone. The Redskins, like the Giants, had wasted a great scoring opportunity and were forced to settle for three points from Mark Mosley. The game was tied at three. Now in the second quarter, Washington's defense again came up with a ball when Morton threw directly into the arms of cornerback Pat Fisher. Interceptions were Morton's big problem last year, and it was hoped the addition of Sanka would help alleviate this tendency. Once again, Kilmer went quickly on the attack, getting a nice run up the middle from Mike Thomas. Thomas, last year's rookie surprise, has beaten out Calvin Hill for a starting job, and today far overshadowed highly heralded John Riggins. Two plays later, Kilmer fired a strike over the middle to Roy Jefferson for a second straight first down to the New York 35. Jefferson, a 12-year vet, is a starter again due to the injury that has put Charlie Taylor out for the season. As usual, Kilmer used his backs beautifully as receivers today. Mike Thomas got behind Pat Hughes for a reception and was off and running until he dropped the ball. Bobby Brooks recovered Thomas' mistake on the three-yard line and Washington's best drive of the day, in fact, the best offensive series by either team so far, was wiped out by the fumble. One look at Mike Thomas' face reveals how he felt about it. Despite consolation from his coach, Thomas was a study of abject frustration. The fumble didn't cost Washington anything more than possession of the football since New York was soon forced to punt. But with a minute 49 left in the first half of this tie game, Craig Morton came up with a play that broke the tie and produced the first touchdown of the game. Little Ray Rhodes, the Giants' big play receiver, had gone 63 yards on the bomb. Another look at the tie-breaking touchdown shows Morton with good protection, snapped off a perfect pass to Rhodes, who shook off Ken Houston's flying tackle. And then with Billy Kilmer helplessly watching, raced down the sidelines to Pater. This one very big play had broken open a tight defensive battle. The Washington Redskins now trailed an obviously improved New York Giants team by seven points at the half. The Giants opened the second half with a 10-3 lead. The ball and the ability to control it with Larry Zonka who already had picked up half a hundred. But when a penalty forced Morton into second and 17, he went to the air. Walker Gillette looked open, but Jake Scott was vintage Jake Scott. Scott was downed inside the giant 45. Great field position that the Redskins would take advantage of, although not right away. Forced to punt, Mike Bragg hit one to brag about. Watch as his punt lands inside the five and actually backs up before being down by George Allen's extra special special team. Eddie Brown kept the ball from going into the end zone. The Giants took over on their own four and a great play by Dave Butts reduced that to the two. 
Butts' big play was critical, for Morton would now try high-risk second and third down passes from his own end zone. It is rare indeed when Zonka actually loses yardage, and the two yards lost here were important. Here's how it happened. Watch Butts, the fourth redskin from the left, as he goes over John Hicks' attempted cut block to nail Zonka. Morton's second and 12 pass fell incomplete, and on third down, Morton fell. With the heels of his shoes nearly on the goal line, Morton discovered that 36-year-old Ron McDole can still swoop in with the best. The Redskins had two points and trailed by the unlikely score of 10 to five. And on the next play, after getting the ball on a free kick, Billy Kilmer and Frank Grant got the Redskins their first lead in the game. Kilmer to Grant covered 53 yards and Washington led 12 to 10. Looking at the play again reveals that two Giants had a shot at stopping Grant, but Clyde Powers missed a diving attempt, and Grant simply outran Bobby Brooks' tackling angle. Frank Grant was repeating his 1975 success story. Last season, Grant was a much more than adequate fill-in for Roy Jefferson, who has hobbled much of the season. And this year, Grant's presence takes much of the sting out of the loss of all-time leading receiver, Charlie Taylor. With the score 12 to 10 late in the third quarter, Morton and Kilmer squared off in a real old-fashioned shootout. Both quarterbacks led long marches to field goal attempts with the ball in the air almost every play. Frank Grant turned in a beautiful one-handed stab and Larry Brown a one-shoed run after yet another Kilmer pass. Whatever happened to George Allen's plan to rush 40 times a game? New tight end Gene Fugit then turned in back-to-back -back catches for 28 more yards that carried inside the giant 30. But on a second and nine play, Kilmer tried one pass too many. seen from up top, we can see that number 64, John Mendenhall, made a great recovery to get to Kilmer. Kilmer was called for intentional grounding, a loss of 15 yards and a down, and the Redskins did not score. Morton, too, would throw a lot of passes, stemming in large part from the Redskins' second half success in zapping the zonk. With not much of a running game, Morton began to throw often, although subjected to a towed-out, ears-back pass rush. Despite the pressure, beginning a drive in the third quarter and continuing into the fourth, Morton got hot. Giants' undoing on the drive came on a run when Michigan rookie Gordon Bell fumbled. Though they got a remarkable break when the ball returned to Morton, this play and a subsequent sack stalled the Giant drive. Joe Danello tried a 48-yard field goal but missed then pulled up lane, which had to adversely affect his success.
Though all those Morden passes had gone for naught, on the Giants' next possession, one completion did what four on the previous drive could not. A 62-yard bomb to Walker Gillette had the Giants in front 17 to 12 with less than five minutes to go. We now begin another remarkable chapter in the Billy Kilmer story. The Redskins were down by five with less than five minutes to go, and then apparently lost their gutty quarterback on a vicious sack by Dave Gallagher and Jack Gregory. Kilmer would rise ever so slowly from the collision, for the crack of the sack had split open his nose. That he was able to leave the field under his own power is not surprising, for Billy Kilmer has walked away from worse. In 1963, Kilmer was involved in a near-fatal automobile accident, but one year later was back playing football. His entire career has been dotted with physical adversity, but Billy Kilmer always comes back. Today would be no exception. On the sideline, trainer Joe Cuzo and assistant Bubba Tyre work quickly to put Kilmer's nose back in its rightful place. Kilmer credited Tyre with getting him back in the game when he said, Bubba is better than any cut man in the fight game. Without him, I could not have played any more today. And without Billy Kilmer's heart, Billy Kilmer would not have played any more today. In 1975, Kilmer was awarded the George Hallis Most Courageous Player Award. And today's mishap is one more example of why he is so deserving of such an honor. Just about the time Kilmer was ready to return to action, Eddie Brown turned in another special, special team play. His 45-yard punt return set the stage for another heroic Billy Kilmer performance. Brown set Kilmer up on the giant 42 with a minute and a half to go. And though the Giants knew he would be passing and he was constantly harassed, Kilmer hung tough throughout two incompletions. Penalty and this completion to Larry Brown brought the ball to the giant 24. But Kilmer would miss his mark on his next three passes. And so the game came down to one play. Fourth and 10 from the giant 24 with less than 60 ticks to go. On the excruciatingly crucial play, Billy Kilmer had done it again. His pass to Roy Jefferson carried to the five-yard line. And with so much already achieved, it must have been preordained that Kilmer would finish the job. 49 seconds remained as the giant bench watched the touchdown they must have known was coming. Kilmer's touchdown pass to Mike Thomas put the Redskins over the top, 19 to 17. Two things came out of this game. One, though the Giants were disappointed, they are definitely a much improved team in 1976 and nearly beat one of the division's strong boys today. The other point is that George Allen's over the hill gang is not yet over the hill. In particular, one William Orland Kilmer. <laughs> 